In this lab, we'll focus on three of the more fundamental concepts of weather. Water vapor, air pressure, and temperature. More so, we want to answer these questions. One, does air have mass, and if so, how do we measure it? Two, is there water vapor in our air, and if so, how much? Three, how does air pressure relate to air temperature? To answer question one, we'll conduct a simple experiment. Through measuring the pressure of the air, as well as its mass, we'll be able to create a graph to better describe the relationship between the two. Here we have one bottle with a tire valve stem on top. If we want to find out the mass of the air inside, we're going to pump it to different PSI using this bike pump and weigh it again. So to start, we need to account for the weight of the plastic, the metal, the caps. So right now it reads 74.61 grams. We don't want that. We want to tear it or bring it back down to zero by pressing the tear button. Now it reads zero grams. We can take the bottle then and attach it to the bike pump and pump it up to 10 PSI. Using this gauge, you can see how exact I am. So right now it reads 10 PSI. And if we put it back on the scale and find that mass, we'll see that it's 1.68 grams, proving that air does have mass. Now we want to do it another three times for 20, 30, and 40 PSI. You can see that the pressures and the associated masses are presented in this table right here. Now I want you to graph these two with pressure on the x-axis and weight on the y-axis. Follow the spreadsheet provided and predict what the weight would be for 60, 80, and 100 PSI based on the trend line. I should also tell you to be careful if you get hold of a pump and feel inclined to pump up a 2-liter bottle, for whatever reason. I was told that they burst around 120 to 180 PSI, so be careful. Also, don't forget to answer the questions in the lab instruction document. To answer question two, I want you to conduct a conceptual experiment. After that, I'll show you a more quantitative one, and then you could answer the associated questions in the Excel spreadsheet. I want you to get two two-liter bottles with the caps. Take one bottle and cap it, and take the other and blow about 10 to 12 breaths at the bottom with using a straw. Cap it. Place both bottles into an ice bath and see what happens. Don't forget to track the time it takes to observe these changes. Now I'll show you a more quantitative experiment. This thing here is called a sling psychrometer and allows us to calculate relative humidity and dew point temperature. It has two bulbs, as you can see here, a dry bulb and a wet bulb with a cloth around it. If we take a few drips of water and put it on the wet cloth, spin this guy around for a few seconds, we would expect to see some kind of temperature drop in the wet bulb. So now, the dry reads about 75 degrees Fahrenheit, and the wet around 71 degrees Fahrenheit. You can use the tables in the Excel spreadsheet that I provided to find relative humidity and dew point temperature. I've also created some mock data sets to do some other calculations. Now on to the third question. How does air pressure relate to air temperature? Simply put, air pressure is directly related to air temperature as colder molecules tend to be less active and use up less space in a given area. When a molecule warms up, become more active, and they tend to use more space, resulting in greater air pressure. Think about it this way. During the summer, the air is a lot warmer than in the winter, and therefore the air molecules are going to be a lot more active. The same goes for in a car tire. The active molecules in the summer result in the tire expanding versus in the winter where it may seem a little more deflated. Therefore, you may need to add more air in the winter because the tire pressure seems lower. What I want you to do is take two balloons, 
roughly equal size. You can determine their size by finding their mass or by taking string and wrapping it around the fattest part of the balloons to ensure that they're about the same. Put one balloon in direct sunlight and the other in your freezer. Come back in about 10 to 15 minutes and observe what's happened. Again, we'll look at the relationship a little more precisely. Here I have another two liter bottle, some foam peanuts in it, just because they move around when I pump it up, it's a little fun. We have a tire valve stem, thermometer strip, which isn't very accurate, but it gives us a good representation of how the temperature is gonna change, and a bike pump. Now, if we drop the strip in the bottle, room temperature reads about 71 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. If we cap it and pump it up to around 30 PSI, what do you expect would happen? What temperature do you think we're going to reach? Well, I'll show you. So now we can take our reading with the gauge. Shows us we're at 29 PSI. And it also shows us through the temperature strip that we're between 86 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit, proving that there is a direct relationship between pressure and temperature. And just to reiterate, make sure you fill in the Excel spreadsheets and answer the associated lab questions before passing in your assignments.